South American hemorrhagic fever is not a single disease but rather a term that refers to several hemorrhagic fevers found in South America. These fevers are caused by different viruses, and their discovery dates vary. For example, Argentine hemorrhagic fever AHF, also known as Junin virus, was first recognized in 1955 in the Buenos Aires province of Argentina. Bolivian hemorrhagic fever BHF, also known as Machupo virus, was first identified in 1959 in the Beni Department of Bolivia. Venezuelan hemorrhagic fever VHF, caused by the Guanarito virus, was first described in 1989 in central Venezuela. Each of these diseases has distinct characteristics, but they all fall under the category of South American hemorrhagic fevers. South American hemorrhagic fever is a general term that refers to several hemorrhagic fevers found in South America, including Argentine hemorrhagic fever, Junin virus, Bolivian hemorrhagic fever, Machupo virus, and Venezuelan hemorrhagic fever, Guanarito virus. The routes of infection for these fevers can vary but often share some commonalities. Rodent transmission. In many cases, the viruses that cause South American hemorrhagic fevers are primarily transmitted to humans through contact with infected rodents or their excreta, urine, feces, or saliva. This contact can occur directly or indirectly through contaminated food, water, or surfaces. People can also be exposed to the virus while working in fields, farms, or other areas inhabited by infected rodents. Person-to-person -person transmission. Some South American hemorrhagic fevers, such as Argentine and Bolivian hemorrhagic fevers, can also spread through person-to-person -person contact. This transmission typically occurs through direct contact with infected blood, bodily fluids, or tissues. Healthcare workers and close contacts of infected individuals are particularly at risk. Aerosol transmission. In some cases, the viruses responsible for South American hemorrhagic fevers can be transmitted through the air, particularly in enclosed spaces or crowded conditions. This can occur when infected individuals cough, sneeze, or exhale respiratory droplets containing the virus. Nosocomial transmission. In healthcare settings, the viruses causing these fevers can spread through contaminated medical equipment, such as needles or syringes, or through contact with infected blood or bodily fluids. Preventing the spread of South American hemorrhagic fevers involves measures such as rodent control, proper hygiene, and the use of personal protective equipment in healthcare settings. South American hemorrhagic fever is a term that encompasses several hemorrhagic fevers found in South America, such as Argentine hemorrhagic fever, Junin virus, Bolivian hemorrhagic fever, Machupo virus, and Venezuelan hemorrhagic fever, Guanarito virus. The symptoms of these fevers can vary, but they often share some commonalities. Early symptoms. In the initial stages of infection, symptoms may resemble those of a common flu, including fever, headache, fatigue, muscle aches, and chills. Gastrointestinal symptoms. As the disease progresses, affected individuals may experience nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and abdominal pain. Hemorrhagic symptoms. Hemorrhagic fevers are characterized by their tendency to cause bleeding in various parts of the body. This bleeding can manifest as petechia, small red or purple spots on the skin, ecchymosis, larger areas of skin discoloration due to bleeding, epistaxis, nosebleeds, gum bleeding, hematemesis, vomiting blood, or melena, black, tarry stools. Neurological symptoms. Some South American hemorrhagic fevers can cause neurological symptoms, such as dizziness, confusion, irritability, tremors, or seizures. Severe complications. In severe cases, these fevers can lead to complications like shock, organ failure, or disseminated intravascular coagulation, DIC, a condition where small blood clots form throughout the body leading to severe bleeding and organ damage. It is essential to seek medical attention promptly if you suspect that you or someone you know may have contracted a South American hemorrhagic fever, as early diagnosis and treatment can significantly improve the chances of recovery. South American hemorrhagic fever refers to several hemorrhagic fevers found in South America, such as Argentine hemorrhagic fever, Junin virus, Bolivian hemorrhagic fever, Machupo virus, and Venezuelan hemorrhagic fever, Guanarito virus. Treatment for these diseases is primarily supportive, 
as there is no specific antiviral treatment for most of them. Here are some general treatment approaches for South American hemorrhagic fevers. Supportive care. Patients with hemorrhagic fever often require hospitalization for close monitoring and supportive care. This care may include managing fever, providing hydration, maintaining electrolyte balance, and managing pain. Ribavirin. For some South American hemorrhagic fevers, such as Argentine hemorrhagic fever, antiviral medication ribavirin may be used. Ribavirin has shown effectiveness in reducing mortality and the severity of the disease when administered early in the course of the infection. Blood products and clotting factors. In cases where patients experience severe bleeding, they may require transfusions of blood products, such as packed red blood cells, platelets, or clotting factors. Treatment of complications. Severe cases of South American hemorrhagic fevers can lead to complications, such as organ failure, shock, or disseminated intravascular coagulation DIC. These complications require specific treatments, such as dialysis for kidney failure or the use of medications to manage blood pressure and other vital signs. Infection control. To prevent the spread of the virus in healthcare settings, strict infection control measures, including proper hand hygiene, the use of personal protective equipment, PPE, and isolation of infected patients, should be followed. It's essential to seek medical attention promptly if you suspect you or someone you know may have contracted a South American hemorrhagic fever, as early diagnosis and treatment can significantly improve the chances of recovery. Prevention of South American hemorrhagic fevers, such as Argentine hemorrhagic fever, Junin virus, Bolivian hemorrhagic fever, Machupo virus, and Venezuelan hemorrhagic fever, Guanarito virus, involves several strategies aimed at reducing the risk of exposure to the viruses and controlling their spread. Here are some key prevention measures. Rodent control. Since many of the viruses responsible for South American hemorrhagic fevers are transmitted by rodents, controlling rodent populations is essential. This includes maintaining clean living spaces, sealing holes and gaps in buildings, and storing food and water in rodent-proof containers. Personal protective measures. When working in fields, farms, or other areas inhabited by rodents, it is crucial to wear gloves, long sleeves, and pants to minimize direct contact with rodents and their excreta, urine, feces, or saliva. Safe food and water. Ensure that food and water sources are not contaminated by rodent excreta. Wash fruits and vegetables thoroughly, and store food in rodent-proof containers. Boil or purify water if its safety is uncertain. Awareness and education. Raising awareness of the risk factors for South American hemorrhagic fevers and educating people on the importance of rodent control and personal protective measures can help reduce the spread of these diseases. In healthcare settings, Strict infection control measures should be followed to prevent the spread of the viruses in hospitals and clinics. This includes proper hand hygiene, the use of personal protective equipment, PPE, and isolation of infected patients. Surveillance and reporting. Early detection and reporting of South American hemorrhagic fever cases can help health authorities take appropriate measures to control the spread of the disease and provide timely treatment for affected individuals. Research and vaccine development. Ongoing research into the development of vaccines for South American hemorrhagic fevers can play a crucial role in their long-term prevention and control. For example, a vaccine called Candid No. 1 has shown promise in preventing Argentine hemorrhagic fever, but it is not yet widely available. By following these prevention measures and staying informed about the risk factors for South American hemorrhagic fevers, individuals and communities can work together to reduce the spread of these potentially deadly diseases.